Here we're gonna look at a problem from the Nordic math contest. So this is a mathematical competition between Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Denmark. So this is from the 1993 edition and it is question one and it has to do with a certain functional equation. So let's go ahead and let f go from 0, 1, so that closed interval on the real line to the real numbers. So in other words, it takes on real values be a non-decreasing function such that f of x over 3 equals 1 half f of x. But now notice that's exactly the same as saying f of x equals 1 half f of 3x just by replacing x with 3x there. Then next we have f of 1 minus x equals 1 minus f of x. And then use these two facts to find the following values of f. So we want to find f evaluated at 173 over 1993, and then f evaluated at 1 13th. Okay, so before we get into a solution, let's go ahead and look at a hint. So maybe the first hint is really just the definition of non-decreasing. And some people would call this the definition of increasing, but you know, I want to be really careful um, and point this out that sometimes these are different. So f is non-decreasing if whenever x is less than or equal to y, f of x is less than or equal to f of y. So notice this implies that a constant function is non-decreasing. Now, sometimes this is exactly the definition of a function being increasing, but depending on what author you're reading, you might have a strict inequality here and a strict inequality here, which would not allow a constant function to be an increasing function. Okay, so now the next one is really just a hint that goes with all problems having to do with functional equations, and that's find some nice values. And then finally, here's a nice little arithmetic hint, which is really given to us by this green dotted equation down here. And that is maybe we want to think about the equation half equals one minus half. OK, so maybe give this problem a go with these hints. We'll come back with a solution. So hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look at a solution. So the first thing that I want to notice is that because 0 over 3 is the same thing as 0, we know immediately that f of 0 equals f of 0 over 3, which equals 1 half f of 0. But the only number that is half of itself is the number 0. So in other words, we have f of 0 equals 0. Good, but now we can use that fact along with this green dot to get a value for f of one also. So let's go ahead and notice that f of one is gonna be the same thing as f of one minus zero, which is one minus f of zero, which is one. So here we've got two facts going on. We have f of zero equals zero and we have f of one equals one. Another thing that we can notice real quick is that f of a half is going to be equal to, to a half but we can actually do a little bit better than that. We can notice that f of one over three is gonna be the same thing as f of one times one half. So that's by this equation right here, but we know f of one equals one, so this equals a half. Now we're gonna use that last hint that said that a half was equal to one minus a half to look at f of two thirds. But notice f of two thirds is the same thing as f of one minus one third, which is going to be one minus f of one third, which is going to be one minus half, which equals half. Now I want to make the following claim. If x is in the closed interval one third to two thirds, f of x equals one half. And so this is pretty clear from this observation that we've made right here. So f of one third is a half, f of two thirds is a half. So that means the only value that we can have between one third and two thirds is also a half. Otherwise, we would not have an increasing function here or a non-decreasing function. But let's go ahead and prove this carefully. So notice that if x is in the closed interval my, uh, one third to two thirds, then that tells us that x is between one third and two thirds. But then by the non decreasingness of our function, that tells us that f of x is between f of one third and f of two thirds. But both of those numbers are equal to a half. 
So that means f of x is equal to a half. Okay, so we've got some facts happening here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the ones that we need to finish this off to the top and we'll continue. So, so far we've proven the following condition on the function f. That if we take x between the closed interval one third to two thirds, we know f of x equals a half. So it's constant on that middle third of our domain interval, which is zero to one. And now the game is just to take f evaluated at this 173 over 1990 and play around with these two conditions until we get it in terms of f evaluated at something between a third and two thirds. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to start with this first one. So 173 over 1993. And all the time that we do this, I'm gonna go ahead and do some sort of very quick calculation for about where we are for our input. So notice that this number is definitely less than 0 0.1. But the fact that it's less than 0 0.1, that means that it's not between a third and two thirds, so we cannot do anything just yet. So let's go ahead and build it up until we maybe get in that closed interval third to two thirds, or we go a little bit past it. So we're gonna apply this rule so let's see, that's gonna be the same thing as one half F evaluated at three times this. So I'll just write that down. So this is gonna be 519 over 1993. Good. But ne the next thing that I wanna notice is 519 over 1993. Well, so that's not quite a third. That's like a little bit less than a quarter. So I'll maybe put this thing is approximately equal to a quarter. Good. So we're gonna wanna apply this again to get a larger input still. So applying it again, we get one fourth F evaluated at, now we're gonna multiply that by three. So we get 1557 over 1993. But now we've gone a little bit too far. So you can check that this is approximately equal to 0 0.78. So it's bigger than two thirds. And you can just arithmetically check that it's bigger than two thirds by like cross multiplying the uh, inequality. And that's not too hard to just check really, really quickly. Okay, so that means we're gonna want to not apply this rule again, but maybe we'll apply this rule. So that's gonna be equal to one quarter and then one minus F evaluated at one minus this. But no notice that one minus that is 440 over 1993. But let's look at this. So this number right here is approximately equal to 0 0.2. So it's about 400 over 2000, which would be like uh, the same thing as two over 10 or one over five. And so that's a good range. Now we're gonna go ahead and apply this again, because if we apply this, we will in fact between, be between one third and two thirds. So this is gonna be the same as a quarter, and then one minus a half times F of, now we're gonna multiply this by three. So we've got 1320 over 1993. Good. But you can check that this thing is between one third and two thirds. In other words, it's on the closed interval one third to two thirds. Great, which means we know the value of the function at that point is equal to half. So we get that this is equal to a quarter, one minus a half times a half, which is gonna be a quarter and then times three quarters. In other words, it's three sixteenths. So we've got a value for this. It is three over 16. So I'll go ahead and get rid of all of this and we'll calculate the F of one over 13. So we just got done calculating our first value. So F of 173 over 1993 is three over 16. Now we're gonna play around with this F of one over 13. And this is actually gonna be constructed a little bit differently, which is kind of interesting. So let's take this F of one over 13 and notice that we can write that as one half f of three over 13, which is equal to one quarter f of nine over 13. But now you can do a quick calculation and see that nine over 13 is bigger than two thirds. So that means we need to bring this back down using this green dot here. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's gonna be one quarter. And then we've got one minus f evaluated at 
one minus nine thirteenths. So that's gonna be four thirteenths. Good. But the next thing that you can do is check that four over 13, well, that's gonna be less than four over 12, but four over 12, 12 is a third. So we're again, outside of that interval, one third to two thirds, but we're outside below. So we'll apply this blue dot and that's gonna give us here one quarter and then one minus one half F evaluated at, so this times three, that's gonna be 12 over 13. But now 12 over 13 is most definitely bigger than two over three, but it has this nice property that it is um, one minus one over 13. So we can actually use this rule to build an equation to solve for one over 13. So let's just reiterate what we're doing here. So notice that this guy right here is gonna be the same thing as one minus F of one over 13. And that's because one over 13 is one minus 12 over 13. So let's put that all together. So I'm gonna bring this F of one over 13 down. So that's just down from there. And now we're gonna have one quarter and then one minus one half times the quantity one minus F of one over 13. So now we've got a nice equation that we can solve for F of one over 13. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's see, we've got a quarter and then this is gonna give us minus one eighth and then it's gonna be plus one eighth F of one thirteenth. So in the end, we'll have seven over eight F of one thirteenth. So that's what we get by moving this bit over is equal to one over eighth. So a quarter minus an eighth is an eighth. So now we can multiply by the reciprocal and we very quickly get the F of 1 13th is equal to one over seven. And that's our last value here. So this F of one over 13 is one over seven. So I think what's nice about this is that we didn't have to use anything having to do with this trick right here. All we had to do was use these first two properties. Now, maybe, just to leave you guys with a similar problem to practice this a little bit. So let's go ahead and see if we can find F of 145 divided by 2020. So play around with that and uh, post, it, post what you get in the comments. That's a good place to stop.